We're really doing a gentil jeune fille bien rangée today. Biblio Sophie. Hello, hello, I'm Sophie. Welcome to my channel. This is the New York book tag. Yes, indeed. I have been tagged not once, but twice, and I've been avoiding doing it for several weeks. Um, Kieran Reader first tagged me, and then Nathan Snook tagged me in relatively short succession. And I was avoiding doing this tag because I am really terrible at picking favorites. But I got peer pressured into doing it. Thank you for peer pressuring me. So without further ado, let's do let's do a relatively quick book tag. Number one, what is your favorite book set in or around New York? I say relatively quick because I'm not going to give you one book. I'm not even going to give you two books. I'm going to give you a whole goddamn slew of books. So here are some favorites of mine that relate to New York and being in New York. Uh, in no particular order, The Lonely City by Olivia Lang, which I just reread uh, in January. Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville, which I also just reread in January. Um, in the same vlog, I'm reading both of those. And in fact, I'm reading also Robin D.G. Kelly's um, biography of Thelonious Monk. And I'm going to add that to the list because it's a great biography of a great musician uh, who was very much a New York fixture. So all of those. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, uh, the first chunk of it takes place in New York and really, really feels like New York summer. Uh, Passing by Nella Larson and also Quicksand by Nella Larson, both of which partially take place in Harlem. Uh, 10.04 by Ben Lerner. This is my favorite of his uh, trilogy of novels uh, and it takes place mostly in Brooklyn, um, and in New York also in general, um, and is very kind of familiar to me. Uh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshveg, um, very good um, New York claustrophobic novel. Uh, Just Kids by Patti Smith, an excellent primer of a specific slice of uh, New York artistic life. Uh, Chelsea Girls by Eileen Miles, um, also a particularly good memoir of a specific kind of artist, New Yorker. The Age of Innocence, going back to the 19th century by Edith Wharton. Uh, Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Um, Close to the Knives by David Wonorovich, which I just read uh, this past month. Um, and... I finished it off at the biography of Susan Sontag called Sontag by Benjamin Moser, um, which also has a lot of her life in New York. I'm going to add two more books that I actually haven't read, but they are going to be aspirational recommendations so that I finally uh, get to reading them. And that is kind of all of the uh, fiction of James Baldwin because I've read a lot of his nonfiction and actually New York looms kind of not large but um, in the shadows of a lot of his essays anyway but um, it is an important part of his fiction. The only fiction of his that I've read is Giovanni's Room and that takes place in Paris. So the fiction of James Baldwin, um, as well as Jazz by Toni Morrison, which is a Toni Morrison that I've never read, and it takes place in Harlem, I believe. So I'm going to add those aspirationally. And I think that's enough. <laughs> uh, number two. New York is famous for its skyscrapers. What is the highest building you have been up? Uh, the other part of why I didn't want to do this tag is because the questions like the first one, which is excellent, but I just couldn't um, organize my thoughts into just one answer. I don't really have an answer to number two. I have no idea. I don't really remember. For instance, I don't know if I've been up the Empire State Building. Um, Probably a building in China, maybe? I have no 
idea. I would assume something in either Shanghai or Beijing. I don't think I've ever been up anything particularly tall in London. Maybe something in New York. Yeah, I don't really know. I have no recollection. So that's a very boring answer. Number three. New York, New York, so good they named it twice. What is the last book you reread? Um, I'm just finished today, in fact, as of filming The Idiot by Elif Bateman, uh, which I read uh, a few years ago when it came out, and I plan to read either or, so I wanted to revisit uh, The Idiot, and it was nice to reread. Number four. American Psycho was a disturbing novel set in New York. What is the most disturbing book you have read? Um, again, couldn't narrow it down, but I'm going to narrow it down to a specific trio of books that I read in succession to one another uh, in late May. And which was, it was a good disturbing trio and I think it, they, they served to um, amplify their disturbing aspects. Um, because I read one after the next, uh, Girls Against God by Yeni Val, then immediately followed by The Coming Bad Days by uh, Sarah Bernstein, and then finally Asylum Road by Olivia Sucic. Um, and all three of those are disturbing in their own ways. Uh, I would say that The Coming Bad Days is really, really uneasy. Um, it's the most kind of simmering disturbing, but all three of them are quite disturbing in their own ways. Girls Against God is the most like outlandishly disturbing, creepy. Uh, but yeah, all three of them are pretty creepy, disturbing things, uh, especially in quick succession to one another. Uh, number five. Where were you when you heard the news about 9-11? I was in California. And that's kind of all I have to say about that. Uh, number six, what is your favorite movie set in New York? Once again, I have a lot of movies. I'm sorry. Uh, here's a long list. Probably my favorite is Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock from the 50s. Um, it's a really good movie in and of itself. Um, it's probably my favorite Hitchcock, actually, and it's uh, a really... it uses New York life and um, a specific aspect of New York loneliness, but New York paired with New York voyeurism really wonderfully as part of its um, plot. I won't give a rundown of all of the others. Uh, Taxi Driver, Moonstruck, I love Moonstruck. Uh, American Psycho makes it in also. I think American Psycho, especially the first half of it, I get kind of tired of American Psycho, but it's a delicious satire and it looks so damn good. Uh, there are a lot of 80s movies. American Psycho is actually from 2000, it's not, but it depicts the 80s. So I have a certain kind of fascination for 80s um, New York before I existed, basically this kind of... Um, high intensity New York. Um, because in that vein, Working Girl, I love that movie. It delights me and looks damn good. Ghostbusters. Uh, Tootsie, on a much less uh, delightful um, turn, uh, How to Survive a Plague, which is uh, a documentary about the AIDS epidemic and ACT UP, I think specifically ACT UP, um, and the the attempts to survive the the community um, organizing uh, that was going on during the AIDS epidemic. It's a really beautiful use of primary footage. Um, I re that I haven't seen that documentary in a number of years, so I don't know if it holds up for me. But I remember adoring it when I saw it. Um, on a similar theme, um, Paris is Burning, which is an imperfect, uh, work, but really was such an important, formative, uh, movie 
to introduce people to ball culture. Um, and is it's, it's a hard thing to watch. It is really delightful, but it's a hard thing to watch when you realize um, what happened to all of the various participants of that documentary afterwards um, who did and did not survive the 90s. And um, to finish it off, uh, Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee, which was a really formative uh, movie for me when I first saw it. Yeah, that's a good chunk of movies of all kinds. Uh, number seven, have you been to New York? When was the last time you visited New York? I'm in New York right now, baby. I live here. Uh, I've been living here for several years and I love living here. Um, it's probably my favorite place to live currently. It's the place where I feel most at home. Uh, it has definitely plenty of problems to it and I find myself exhausted by it a lot of the time, um, but it feels wonderful. And I'm also extremely lucky to be in a comfortable situation in New York. Um, I have a wonderful apartment and I have a community and I have friends, etc. Um, so my New York is a, is a nice homey New York. Number eight. Who is your favorite painter from New York or what is your p favorite painting of New York? I struggled a lot with this one, so this is a, yet another reason why I didn't want to answer uh, this question um, because I couldn't, I just couldn't narrow it down. Uh, but then Modern Ajima gave me the perfect answer, I agree, Alice Neal. I really love uh, the work of Alice Neal and I think that that's a beautiful uh, representation of the people of New York or New York through its people. So I am stealing your answer. Thank you very much. And uh, finally, what is your favorite song about New York? Um, Hey, guess what? Couldn't narrow it down, but I managed to narrow it down. I'm gonna say Lonely House um, from Street Scene by Kurt Vile with lyrics by Langston Hughes. I think, again, that it really encapsulates a theme that I keep going back to, which is the um, busyness and loneliness of New York, where you are simultaneously uh, surrounded by people and also often very much alone. And that can be a deeply melancholy and alienating experience. So you have, you know, the invis invisible man, excuse me, side of being alone in a crowd. Uh, or it can be also a deeply freeing um, aloneness, depending on what your, what your perspective is, what what else is going on in your life. So yeah, Lonely House by Kurt Vile with the uh, lyrics by Langston Hughes. That's my short New York video. Ciao. So